Mary Bates believes that bats possess extraordinary capabilities, which we are just beginning to understand. Once you see what these animals are doing in their, normally in their natural environment, then from there you can say, wow, they have amazing abilities. Let's take this into the lab and test it and see exactly what they can do and what they can perceive. Mary Bates is a postdoctoral fellow at Brown University, studying under NSF grantee James Simmons. The focus of their work is to determine how bats use their own biosonar to hone in on prey. They emit high-frequency, high-energy sounds and then listen for the echoes that reflect off of objects in front of them to come back. And from those echoes, they can tell all kinds of things, how far away something is based on the, the delay that it takes for the echo to return. They can tell how fast it's moving, um, about, you know, what size, possibly even what material it is. Um, really, they have extremely sophisticated echolocation abilities. Bats have unique capabilities that prevent them from colliding with objects such as branches and trees. One of our main sort of hypotheses with this line of research is that the bats are emitting a sound and forming some sort of template of what that sound looks like in their brains that lasts a little long, that lasts for a small period of time until they get an echo back. And once that echo returns to them, they can compare the echo to the template of the sound they emitted and see where the differences are. And, and they're sensitive to extremely small differences. They can tell very well the time delay between the sound they emitted and the echo that comes back, and they're very um, good at just instantly converting that into a distance. Brown researchers decided that to capture the truest sound that a bat emits was to place a microphone on its back and create an environment that would mimic obstacles in nature. So we can attach these microphones to the bat, fly them around the room. The second part of the room is that um, it has these hooks in the ceiling and floor that we can attach uh, rows of vertically hanging plastic chains to. So with all these chains, we can sort of create a complicated uh, environment for the bat. Despite their amazing feats of flight, bats usually take the easiest route to their hunting grounds each night. What we're doing in our research is sort of testing the limits of what they're able to do. Um, to see, you know, under the worst possible circumstances, um, can they still, you know, avoid obstacles? Can they still uh, recognize their own echoes, things like that. Dr. Simmons and Mary Bates created a platform task where a bat responds to electronic echo stimuli. Um, and so the, the basic task is it's a Y-shaped platform, which means that there's the base of the Y and then the animal can walk down either the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Um, and it, it's, we, we train it to do that um, with food reward. We give them a piece of mealworm when they go down the, the correct side. What they discovered was that when bats echolocate, they have multiple harmonics, which help a bat form a picture of its environment. That can tell its own sound echo pairs from the very similar sound echo pairs coming from other bats doing the same thing, you know, all echolocating, all looking for insects in a small area. And if they have this very precise template matching process somewhere in their brain, then the sound of another bat, even if it differs very, very slightly in frequency and in, in the shape of the, the sweep uh, of the sound, things like that are going to make a huge difference to the bat. That is how a bat is able to focus on a very small insect, but not be overwhelmed by the environment around it. We think the answer to that has to do with uh, the bat keeping the target in the center of its sound beam so that the echo returning from that target contains the, the most information. It contains more of the frequencies present in the sound that that emitted, and it, they're all coming back together. For humans, we have a lot to gain from studying bats. We learn about um, this specialized sensory system um, of hearing in bats, the more we learn about the sense of hearing in general. Because they're mammals, they really do share a lot of the same basic biology. It's just built in a different way. Once Mary began working with bats, she has fallen prey to their charm. But there's no reason to be any more afraid of bats just because, you know, they come out at night, they're, you don't get to see them close up. And I, I tell people, if you see them close up, they're just kind of adorable. They're really cute little animals. They're really charming once you get to see them and know them. For the National Science Foundation, I'm Gwen Morgan.